Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome, folks, to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. Boy, I'm excited. Boy, I'm really, really excited. Boy, we've got all sorts of issues that are out there on the table. We've got national issues. I'm talking about politics now. We've got national issues, and we've got lo- local issues. I think Oregon's, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're right in the middle of it in Oregon. I mean, with the with the newly elected uh, governor sh- governorship of Oregon and and on and on. But but today, what we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about uh, a person with a person today. We've invited a person to talk with us about um, his time uh, as spent as chair of Oregon Republican Party. You've seen him. Be- you've seen him d- during the during this year that he's been here. Uh, I mean, he's really been very much involved. The Republican Party's got a new look, and and by Georgia. Uh, Art was part of that, and uh, and hopefully it will continue as far as I'm concerned. Art, welcome aboard. How's it going? Well, thank you. Good, good. Well, it's going pretty well. In well, fact, it's going better. I don't have to do that job over there. Well, hey, but, but you did a heck of a job. <laughs> you did a heck of a job this year. I was naturally I was there and then with you and whatever. But the fact of the matter is, you did a heck of a job. Well, and thank you. and we would like to make sure that the the viewership and Oregonians get a feel for kind of some of the things that you've done. But the other unique thing that was about you in in in, in this particular time, you were also running for office. Which is which was yeah. sort of unheard of, but you were running. You well, were doing it, it shouldn't be unheard. No, but my point is that. Yeah. But that was very interesting because we want to take advantage of this because the idea is that you were knocking on doors and mm. and understanding what issues are all about yeah. and and also motivating, I guess, other folks uh, around the state to also run for office mm. who might have been chair of the various districts and whatever. So anyway, we're going to spend some time with Art and welcome aboard. And before I get into the deal, as, I, as you notice, I still got my hat on. And for you vets out there, go and sign up. Go and sign up for your benefits. You know, hey, if you're a parent of a vet, uh, you know, a, a quote, a, a, an aunt or whatever, the bottom line is that get these guys to get a, get that sign, get those benefits because they're there, they're deserving, and again, thanks for serving, guys. Okay? All right. With that, all right, welcome aboard Thank again. You. And so let's let's talk about this piece. Okay? One, talk. You're the one. Am I supposed to talk? You well, talk. You're the I interviewer. Want, I, no, but we want to hear from you. <laughs> what? Okay. Give, give well, us your, your, your you, you, uh, thing that you benefit. The, the, the question is first, why you do this job? Why yeah, you, right. Doing right, political right. work, and and uh, I uh, you do it because our state and nation are in difficulty. Right. And America has been in severe difficulties several times in her history, mm-hmm. and every time she's been saved because free people breed people of excellence who rise out of the free population mm-hmm. and save her. Mm-hmm. The difficulty this time uh, is internal with our own government, but thousands, hundreds of thousands of Americans all across the country are just walking out of their houses saying, I gotta help, something's, mm-hmm. gotta, something's gotta be done. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're a lot like that, <laughs> so am I. And so, uh, why are we there? What things are happening? Yeah, exactly. Well, exactly. one of the things is our taxes are, are, yeah. are, are starving our industries and businesses, and the regulations, and Oregon has a pretty bad problem with that. I uh, one of the things I did uh, in I ran for Congress right and, and against, one of the things I did I, Defazio right yeah Defazio and wait, wait, what area of the state is that that's uh, District Four what's, what's sort of the makeup yeah, of that it goes area. from uh, Albany down to the co- down to California over the coast and over the mountains it's about the same size as Switzerland okay okay and the uh, uh, the you start north of Eugene and Corvallis mm-hmm. and then go south. And, what I was going to say is I, I knocked on the doors of about a thousand businesses. Mm-hmm. And when you're in Lane, Lane County, when you're Eugene, Eugene and Corvallis, mm-hmm. they're pretty prosperous. But there are hundreds of millions of dollars of government money going into those two universities. So there's a lot of printed and tax money going into Eugene and Corvallis, mm-hmm. so they're, they're thriving. Mm-hmm. As soon as you get south of there, it's awful. Really? Uh, Almost every businessman you talk to is having trouble. I mean, real trouble. Hmm. And this is true across the country. The Wall Street Journal had a, a graph a, a couple of weeks ago mm-hmm. of the percentage of American businesses owned or at least partially uh, run by men and women under 30. Hmm. 25 years ago, it was over 10%. Today, it's 3.6%. Young businessmen are, are becoming 
extinct. And extinct. Yeah. Yeah. And the yeah. reason is because of the high taxes and high regulations that make it almost impossible to do business. And if you go down and start knocking on doors, and it's a lot of fun because businessmen are, are mm -hmm. gregarious and mm -hmm. interested in what they do. You go into a business and usually the businessman just starts talking about his troubles. Mm -hmm. You say, I'm, I'm running for Congress, I'm Art Robinson, and one visits the business. He'll just start talking about what's bothering him. Sometimes they say, uh, if you're elected, what do you do for me? And I say, I'll get the government off your back. And then they bright up, light up, and start talking about mm -hmm. how the government's mm -hmm. on their back. Mm -hmm. But the, the business environment, most of our jobs, new jobs, are generated by small business. And these guys are just being destroyed between the taxation, the regulation, the permits, all the environment in which they have to work makes it almost impossible but to you make know, a living. But, but Martin, in all due respect, uh, sometimes um, there's, there seems to be a sort of a disconnect between the employer and the employee. Yeah, and, and, it get, and it gets... Why, why is that so? Well, what, what, uh, any, any thoughts on that? It, uh, it, that's the question. First, it's a question of personal relations, and a good businessman okay. uh, does that. But the state gets in and makes it a lot worse because now the state requires so many things to employ someone. Uh, biz, uh, an employee almost becomes a paid enemy even if he's a good guy mm. because you hire somebody and the state comes in and tells you and, and restricts the way he can be employed and demands all the things that you have to provide. And then the businessman says, I can't afford to have the employee. But then the voting, but and the then voting of course public, when you pay the pop, if you yeah, pay the employee right. and he pays half his money in taxes, you got to pay him twice as much so he can pay his taxes. The whole thing gets very. But very the interesting difficult. thing about that, the the, the employee, the yeah. majority, of the, the majority of the voting yeah. pu public are employees. Sure, and they right. they are the one that basically votes in, if That's you will, right. the That's government. Right. It's right. still a government of right. the people, by the people, and for the people. Yeah, right? we try to make them understand election time that if they make it easier. That they lower the taxes and regulations, their employer could pay them more. And then, but then, but then, <laughs> on that same scenario, it, it, it has been said that the employers pretty well buy up the buy up the electorate, if you will. You know what I'm saying? Well, so I mean, they put the monies in to get to get the their representative to elect to represent them. So what 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 was well what, what's up? How do we get, what, out, get the, the way you get away around this? We had the founders of this country were pretty smart. Okay. And they gave us a constitution and bill of rights that works. Okay. Uh, and one of the things, uh, it, it, the Constitution basically protects us from the government, but the government's been ignoring that. Uh, our people have been taught that if you can get 51% of the vote, you can vote away your neighbor's property. But I'm sorry, that you can, right? <laughs> but if you allow pure democracy and everybody can vote away the other guy's property, then you don't have property rights. And, the, and, and gradually they're doing that because they're saying, well, you got a business, but here are your taxes, here are your regulations, you want to operate your property and, and live on it, and we're going to make it almost impossible for mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the intrusion of government into all our lives, and this is across the board, I mean the, uh, the Democrat counterculture people in Cave Junction are just as mad as the businessmen, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. because the government's everywhere telling them what to do. Mm -hmm. So this is the problem. The, the electorate is most interested, according to polls and, and uh, the things we know, is most interested in jobs, the economy, mm -hmm. education, and they worry about national defense when the world affairs look right, bad. Right. And uh, both education and their jobs depend upon benign government. And government's not so benign anymore, and it's screwing both things up. <laughs> well, you know, uh, yeah, along that same thing, you, you mentioned one of those threes about jobs and whatever. You know, now we're looking at and facing, i.e., uh, the ra raising the, um, the the rate, if you will, the minimum hourly wage. rate, yeah. the minimum wage, yeah. at what fifteen bucks an hour. Yeah. Well, now how you you were knocking on doors? How 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 were employers reacting to that? Well. In some cases, the employer would say, well, if I have to pay more, I can't afford to hire him. That's one effect. Mm -hmm. It diminishes the number of jobs. Is big business, small business, or what? Which well, uh, small business would be affected be more. Most, okay. But the other thing that's important is our youth. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't produce a person at the age of 22 and say, now get a work ethic. Mm -hmm. Our youth, there are laws against hiring young people, unless they're old enough. Mm -hmm. And then you make the minimum wage so high that you can't hire him because the young person with no training, you know, he's starting out in life. Mm -hmm. Between these laws that say that a young person is not allowed to work until a certain age and the ones that say you have to pay him a high wage even when he starts out, mm -hmm. this wipes out the job opportunities for the young. Mm -hmm. And they're, they need a, to learn how to do things. They need to learn a work ethic. And 
it's, it, our young people have less and less uh, abilities along these lines because mm -hmm. they're not allowed to work. Mm -hmm. So you can argue about the, you know, you think about 30, 40 year old person working mm -hmm. and, and he's got a family and he's got a lot of obligations and uh, perhaps his skills are such that he hasn't been paid as much as he'd like. And if you start talking about paying those people more, it's not, I don't think, it, it's a political issue. Mm -hmm. you know, we can be different mm -hmm. on it. But these young people, who are being deprived of jobs because of making the price too high or making laws that you can't hire them mm -hmm. are not getting the work ethic. Did they, you know, a person grows up on a farm, kid grows up on a farm, mm -hmm. he starts working when he's six or seven years old. Mm -hmm. Today, I guess he has to do it without without the government knowing because right, his right, parents right, can't right. send him to milk the yeah. cow without yeah. getting in trouble. Wow. But uh, they, they gain a worth it, work ethic because of the nature exactly. of farm life. Exactly, exactly. But most of our young people live in the cities and we need entry level level places where they are paid a low wage because they're just mm -hmm. starting out, mm -hmm. and where they're allowed to work, mm -hmm. and the and, and and they don't belong on the streets walking on their trousers yeah. and playing their, yeah. with their text messenger. Yeah, yeah. But these laws restrict the entry of young people into the work. But how did uh, work. again? I'm still going back to how did we get there? I mean, when you think about Oregon, you think mm -hmm. about the strawberry seasoning and what season mm -hmm. one time. I mean, people would flock down there as far yeah. as the kids and whatever, basically preparing themselves when school opens. You know, you know, you know, they wear the clothing and all this other good stuff and whatever. But all of a sudden, mm -hmm. someone introduces a bill mm -hmm. and says you can't do that anymore with oh. kids. Well, we, so yeah. who, one, who introduced well, that? Well, they introduced, and why, the, why they introduced we the bill because they think they get get political advantage. They say, oh, I care about the children. I don't want them out there working. Oh, I care about the children. I want you to pay them more. Sounds real good. Well, what about the farmers? The people well, who that's the point them. is, uh, if you're just an entry-level kid and you picking strawberries, you're only worth so much. And also, if you aren't old enough, they're not going to let you pick the strawberries anyway. Mm -hmm. and, and so they stopped the kids from doing that. My generation, all the kids worked. And it isn't so important how much money they're making, but they're given an opportunity to start learning to work. But didn't we understand that the person who maybe put that bill, or proposed that bill, didn't they understand that? Uh, what they understood was they were going to get votes with it because it sounded real good. This is ridiculous. What were some of the other things you were doing as you as you were running against? Uh, in fact, well, why did you why did you run well, against? Well, one thing I'm not I ran against him because I don't think he's a good congressman. And why I, is that? <laughs> well, he votes a progressive liberal line, and okay. he's the kind that votes for higher taxes and higher regulations and more government. Mm -hmm. And I think we need less of those things. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, kind of interesting because in a state chair, I had to encourage other people to run. Right. So I'd go, I went all over the state, met with all the county officials and everything, and said, make sure that you've got good candidates in all the races. Mm -hmm. But I said something else. I said, if you can't get one, go look in the mirror. You're it. Mm -hmm. You know, I got five county chairs to run really? for office. Really, really, really. <laughs> and that, <laughs> that, was, that was one of the things you wanted to do, right? Yeah, and, yeah. And, that, that was kind of controversial yeah, when right. I ran, too. You know, oh, party people shouldn't run. for Why right. not? If they're, if, they're, if they're interested enough in politics to volunteer in the party, why shouldn't they run for office? Well, you know, I liked it. I liked it, that part, because you know, it sort of gives you the merit of talking about the issues. I mean, the fact of the matter is, if you run for office and you sign up, if you yeah. sign up to run for office, you then will have immediate access by the media. Well, which is moreover, <laughs> we were talking about knocking on doors. Yeah. It's one thing to be a party poobah right, and say, right. well, you need my son to go walk right, on doors. Right. Another thing, to walk several thousand doors yourself. Then you know a little more about what you're telling this guy. If you can walk now, nowadays, you can't walk at night, you know what I mean? You gotta well, I didn't it. have that problem. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's, it's a lot of but fun. In some areas, it's yeah, a it's lot fun. of fun to go yeah. door to door because the American people are really nice people. Mm -hmm. You go out and do this. You, you, I come from a scientific background. I have a relatively small number of people I know in that profession. Running for office, you should, I, we've got to make thousands and thousands of wonderful people yeah, in the state. Right, and right. that's the plus of doing this political work because you, the American people are really nice people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, uh, and whether they're on your side or not. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, that's the plus. And uh, the minus is that you're, we're doing it. I'll come out of my science. Other people will, will come out of their life's work to work on these things these days because things have been going wrong. You know, uh, we, need to, we need to fix it. We're sort of going back and forth. One, you're running for office, and the other is the fact that you you would chair the Republican Party. You know, you spent quite a bit of time in the Multnomah County, Portland area. And With well, you. Yeah, well, I know that. <laughs> you, you recruited me. And I, but With you. Line, 
How, one, how did you come up with that idea and why? What was I your came up with it because you called me on the phone. You sure did. <laughs> Jeff Mace made me do it. No, I, I, uh, um, I can't represent. I spent a life in politics. Yes. But one of the things I knew for sure was that uh, our party wasn't appealing enough to less affluent people. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them are minority people. And I wanted to learn about that. Mm -hmm. And when you contacted me, gave me a chance, it took me all over. We must have we're done 20 things together, and maybe more. I wanted to understand. And what I understand, after all the experiences with you, is that when I'm looking at a guy in Multnomah County that voted for Obama, usually I'm looking at a guy that has my values. <laughs> we're the same people. Yeah, right, right, uh, right, right. The, the fundamental values of the people on the street in Multnomah mm -hmm. County that you've introduced me to, and 95% of them voted for Obama, are the same I have. Issues. We're, we're the same, same these issues. are people who want the same things in life, and uh, and we're just not different. You know, I might add that, to you. That, that has, to, and, and that's important to, to, right. to the Republican right, right, Party, right, right. because generally they've been buying the same thing the press right. puts out to everybody, right. that they're different groups. Right. They aren't different groups, they're all Americans. Right. If yeah. you go talk to them, we're not different. You know, I got to I got to make this point. You probably you probably didn't, didn't know this. That I I knew this about yeah. you. You you drove all the way down to come and chat chat with me. Yeah, got me involved, yeah. if you will. Yeah, and then you pulled me out of the Multnomah County area to tell my story around the state by That's by right. identifying me as engagement That's chair right. for the and state. Boy, I tell you, and I, yesterday, that was sharp on your part. Yesterday <laughs> there was an election. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. you ran for vice chairman of the Republican Party. Boy, I tell you, you, you got forty percent of the vote. That was easy. So uh, uh, that's uh, next time I want you to get fifty-one. Well, I want to thank you for that because I thought it was it was good. It was good for uh, for the, for the Republican Party from the standpoint of being able to be introduced, if you will, uh, to a person like me, i.e., that basically reflected Multnomah County, Port, you know, basically minorities across the board, Hispanics, Asian, you know, the whole gamut. Poor folks, the whole nine yard, and uh, I thought it was a good thing for them. You know what well, I mean? I, I didn't. I didn't ask you to run because yeah. we became friends. Yep, that's right. I asked you to run because you know a lot of the things that our party doesn't know, and that it doesn't mean that I'm making different. One of the things you know is that the minorities are not different than the majority. We're all Americans, but you know a lot about things that our party doesn't know, and uh, it. Very important if you could be chairman, a, a vice chair, and I hope you'll be next time. Well, you know, be I, good chairman, I, I, too. I think the percentage of votes that I got, I, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm just going to be very personal about that old piece. I, I, I think the, half of them were veterans and the other were seniors. I don't care what they were, they voted <laughs> for it. And the, the, the thing is that uh, in politics, as we, you know, our nation didn't drift into $20 trillion worth of debt and all of these difficulties it has now overnight, the political class failed us especially the career politicians. Yeah. They have failed us. And the institutions that elect them, which are our political parties, failed us because they elected the wrong people to office. Mm -hmm. So uh, those institutions haven't been doing their job. Mm -hmm. And we have, to, we have to depend for our future on men and women of excellence all over America noticing this and coming out of the woodwork and saying, we've got to fix this. Our political institutions are not doing it. Mm -hmm. So when you see a man of excellence, you want him. Mm -hmm. You want him that way. That's Wally Hicks ran as your as your co as your vice as your chair. The four of you that ran together were people of excellence who knew things that are that are needed to correct the political problems in the country. Of course, they have takes hundreds of thousands of us, mm -hmm. but the political class has failed, and otherwise, are we would be in the trouble we're in. So we have to do the same thing that's happened in America several times before. The men and women of excellence that a free people breeds have to rise out of the country and fix it. Democrats and Republicans, mm -hmm. all of them. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what party they're. I appreciate that. And, you know, and I tell you something else too. And I really enjoyed the, even the encounters. You know, I mean, the spending the the weekend campaigning and things of that mm -hmm. nature. And, and the folks were just great. I mean, I was able to chat with them, and, mm -hmm. and as you say, some of the same issues and values actually exist in their particular areas around the state. And these yeah. people from all over the state of Oregon. Mm -hmm. And in, and at times, I even went out with you lobbying mm -hmm. some of these folks. And and boy, I tell you, I'm going to tell you about this guy. He went all over the state of Oregon, from one, <laughs> from yeah. one end of Oregon to the other end of Oregon. Well, Highway Five, you know, my car I mean, just oscillates on the highway. Gee, I, I mean, I don't have to steer it anymore. Wow. But yeah. well, you know, it gave me an opportunity to see the other part of the state too. That yeah. was really great. It was well, really that, great. Yeah. And and that. Uh, and they got same same issues. Yes. 
And when I say the political class has failed us, yeah. that's the Republican political class and the Democrat political mm -hmm. class. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm looking who's in office, I see what they're doing, I mm -hmm. see how they're strangling our nation, getting us into trouble we shouldn't be in. And that's the whole political class. Mm -hmm. But it's gonna, we're going to be all right. Because one thing I've seen in this four, I've really been involved in politics for four years, one thing I've seen is hundreds of thousands of people that weren't in politics yeah. walking out of their... That's, right. that's what the Tea Party is. Yeah, people, yeah. They try to demonize the Tea Party. I never knew anything about that until I ran in 2010. I went down to uh, Lane County Courthouse. And they were having a Tea Party meeting. Mm -hmm. 600 people. I carried one uh, thought that I still remember away from that. I didn't see anybody in that crowd I wouldn't be ha like, like to have my home for dinner. <laughs> they, they were just ordinary Americans. Ordinary, yeah. They mostly hadn't been in politics. They said, gee, things are going wrong, and they're wandering wand around the streets saying, what can I do? Well, how did, <laughs> and how people did, point at them and say, that's the Tea Party. What's well, a bunch how, of middle-class Americans? It looked like at the end of the day, it, be, it, it picked up the... And the Democrats the, got the, people like that, too. But, the same problem. But still, but it, it seems as though the, 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 the Republican brand was attached to the Tea Party. In fact, that, well, like today, I mean, uh, probably that because uh, they're, they're conservative principles in the Republican Party, uh, the lower taxes and lower regulations, that appeal more to those people than the uh, policies of the Democrats, which are different in this regard. Of course, but uh, um, we, 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 we weren't saved in the World Wars, we weren't saved in the Civil War because only one party came out of the World War. Mm -hmm. Men and women mm -hmm. of excellence from everywhere. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening now. And that's what you see all over this country. Now, of course, it's very—it's a wild contest because mm -hmm. you got the political class, mm -hmm. you guys, the guys in office, mm -hmm. you got a, a hundreds of thousands of Americans that don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. In my case, you got a scientist from Southern yeah, Oregon right, who walks exactly. out of his laboratory and says, "Hey, can I help?" Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I run against the congressman. That's kind of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. then I go to the wrong meeting and I wind up chair of the party. Yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> It, no, now what do I do? No, we did a, we did some useful yeah, things. Yeah. One of the things well, you learned... Well, your kids were involved, too. You might want to share that well, with my them. family. And they, you, they were, everybody was there. Involved. I mean, they were all there. One of the things you learn in science is that... And scientists don't always spend their whole life in one field. They will work in one field, and they get interested in working in another one. Mm -hmm. One of the things you learn is if you switch fields, don't read anything the guys in the new field have written until you play around for a while. Because you have different abilities. You came from a different field. To make a unique contribution... You can't be like the people that are in that field, because if that contribution was to be made, they'd have done it. So you have a different way of thinking, just within uh, that uh, that specialty. Same thing is true in politics. I think these parties become ossified. You know, they're doing the same thing over and yeah. over. And when somebody comes in who uh, I admit I didn't know what they were doing, I uh, I, uh, I I think I brought a sort of unique point of view. Mm -hmm. And that's the other thing that all these people rising up over the country are helping at. When a, a, a scientist or a, an engineer or a businessman, you know, I, I don't have to list all yeah. the kinds, but when somebody like that enters the political realm, who's never been in it before, he has a unique point of view. He also has a different point of view which was more common in the start of our country. Now, most people don't know that for the first century, most congressmen served one term. The average was just over two years. They were citizen volunteers. That constitution wasn't written for career politicians. Mm. So the people in the town get together and say, hey, Joe at the grocery store, he's an honest guy, he's got a nice family, we like him, uh, everybody in the community trusts him, they go to him and say, it's your turn. He mm -hmm. says, who's going to take care of my store? They say, we'll take care of that. Mm -hmm. And he's a little proud. They came and thought of him as a congressman, see? <laughs> so he goes up to Washington. He serves two years and comes home. Somebody else does it. The career, and, and what happens is then their volunteers are trying to do their best for their constituents, for their people, because right, they're going to go right, back. Right. Now we have career politicians. And what those guys do after they've been there three or four years, they say, well, I would like to be here a long time. Then the votes they take are what's good for them instead of necessarily what's good for the country. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The career politicians are one of our problems. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how do we get out of that? Uh, 
Did, what, did you work on that? Alexis your time? and volunteer. Did, did you yeah. work on that doing that? Yeah, well, time? I set an example. So, <laughs> I know you did. You sure no. did. Well, you ran for office. Yeah, no, that it, you do it you that, by and, recognizing. And you started educating, and then that, as a result of being yeah. the chair, and that the, you, you had a constituency no. that would. The public the needs to understand it. Yeah, yeah. They have Very a ten percent. Congress has a ten percent approval rating. Yeah, you're and right. Ninety percent are yeah. reelected. Do they understand that, though? Well, uh, I mean, it's right, our yeah. job. That's one of the jobs of the political parties to yeah. explain it to them. Right, right. And, of course, the congressman comes home and he says, you hate Congress, but it ain't me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and anyway, I'll get you some money. Yeah, yeah. This yeah, is unprincipled, yeah, but that's yeah, what yeah, they say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, uh, and then they, uh, it, 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 oh, we don't have time to talk yeah, about the political yeah, process. Yeah. The people must understand that they must represent themselves and they're getting a much greater selection of people to represent them because of all the concerned, accomplished Americans who are, are, are walking out of their houses and saying, I want to help. You know, I might add, too, that um, art was always available, if you will, uh, to, to i.e., uh, interact with the other majority party, which was the Democratic Party, you know, through the chair. But unfortunately, we weren't <laughs> able to get the chair. We got, we got Bob, uh, Bob Williams, and we got, in fact, we had John. John is here constantly over and whatever. But the whole idea was to, was to get the issues on the table and get a, get a feel yeah. for, for both parties, major well, I, parties. I, I there like, are the parties, but my, the idea is to I, I, get I the issues out of here yeah. so the people can, can get the opportunity what to these see guys the in the Democratic Party didn't want to do was have real debates. Yeah. And I, I finally got a real debate, but I had to do it in the Republican Party. Yeah. <laughs> Yesterday we had a knockdown, drag out, real debate. All right. And no holes right. barred, no yes. moderator. That's right. And uh, between the two guys running for yeah. chair, yeah. and I was delighted because yes. I've been for four years, I've been trying to get a Democrat to debate me like that. They yes. won't. So I made both chair, chair you candidates sure did. do it, and, and we had a great party. party. You sure did. And everybody sure loved did. it. Oh, yeah, sure did. I mean, I, I enjoyed it. I really did. I <laughs> well, learned. you were in it. <laughs> I learned, but I learned something, too. Boy, I you was got a, some great I, speeches, well, too. I appreciate it. You, appreciate you it. gave terrific speeches. You yeah. gave two speeches yeah. that were dynamite. Yeah. You did a good yeah. job. I appreciate that. And, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and the other thing, too, is that it gave me the opportunity to, um, to share my thoughts and my, and my mm -hmm. tenure here. And, and, you know, in the spot that I play here at the Oregon Voters Digest, mm -hmm. because I'm constantly talking to the public, mm -hmm. and we know what the issues are, and we just shared it. I shared it with the folks and saying, "Hey, maybe the, what the, what Art was doing was the he idea." He did a little more than writing. share it. He <laughs> gave a tough speech. <laughs> well, the other thing, the other thing I liked is that he gave me the opportunity, which you did, and that was because I liked that the idea of you're running for office. I, I liked that that idea, because as I indicated before, once you sign on the dotted line. And saying I'm running for office, uh -huh. immediately you 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 basically fundraising because what happens indirectly yeah. because the media yeah. then automatically comes to yeah. you, gives you the right, yeah. if you will, to share your issues. Yeah, and you have to raise money, but uh, it's one thing people don't realize. I've I have run a laboratory for yeah. 40 years, yeah. and we we don't take any government money. We yeah. have to raise right. it in contributions. The thing you have to understand is if you do good work, people will find it. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And, uh, but you've got to get the word out yeah, there. Sometimes these political parties think the first thing to do is raise the money and then find a candidate. Yeah, yeah. What you have to find is a, a man or woman so overwhelmingly uh, good for the people yeah. that people will want to support them. Mm -hmm. If you have a great candidate and a good program, the money will come. Uh, there is a mistake they often make, thinking, well, we got to raise the money yeah. and then we'll get a good candidate yeah. and trust us to spend it. Exactly. Uh, you put a good candidate out there and the money comes. Well, I know one thing, the party for this, for this year I heard it loud and clear. Yeah, I mean, that was part of your platform, and, and I think it was well respected, too, by the way. I mean, just, to, just for the nature of, uh, of the vote results and the, and the like, and, mm -hmm. and the fact that it was, it was enjoyable, it was educational, yeah. it was informational. I even saw, I saw some of the old, the old faces yeah. coming back on board, like Kevin Mannix. I, yeah. I had not seen Kevin in years. All of a sudden, yeah, well, there he was. Is. You know I mean, what that was all about? <laughs> I don't but, know but, either. But he was there. But uh, I, uh, I was anxious for the best people to be yeah, put in I to run that. the party, and we didn't succeed at that, yeah, yeah. but we gave them a good run for their money. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, but you got the issues out though in regards well, to the rationale for doing the, that. They, they know we were there. Exactly, exactly. And the, uh, there are always difficulties in those political parties. Right, right, and, right. Uh, I, uh, I hope that ours, the Republican Party, will improve, and I hope the Democrat Party will improve, and I hope the combination of the improvements and the people that are unaligned 
will fix these problems before our nation gets into worse trouble. Right, right. Well, there are other parties, too. You know, we got the Libertarians. And well, no, got, I, and I mentioned the, the main parties. Right, right. When I ran in right. 2010, right. I was nominated by the, Dem by the Republican Party, the Libertarian Party, right. the Independent Party, and the Constitution Party. Right, 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 right. And then the Libertarians at national level said, you can't do that, so I was endorsed. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm not a... Yeah, and right. I would been, love to be... The I don't people. think the Democrats would have It's done. getting all the people at the table, basically. <laughs> you... you uh, Everybody's yeah. similar, and yep. we had on issues uh, a, a government over issue down in Josephine County uh, about a year ago, and we won that 71 percent. We got half the Democrats to vote with the Republicans. Mm -hmm. If the issue is something that uh, has to do with human freedom and you uh, pose it right, mm -hmm. the Democrats don't want the government meddling in their affairs any more than the Republicans. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of people that vote that don't understand uh, the issues, but um, you can't distinguish, you can't decide whether a candidate is good or a hardworking political person is good by looking at the label on his, mm -hmm. on his head. That doesn't work. I got you. Well, you know, I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take a short break. I'm going to bring John Sweeney on. He happens to be a Democrat. Yeah. And, but you he's know, interested in uh, gun rights. In gun rights. And, and uh, that would have been a lot uh, easier uh, than what you made me well, talk I'll about because we it, both are the it's, same. It's not, going to be, it's not going to be easy for a while. With this new legislature, it won't be easy. And John is right Between on top us of it. Be, be, it's going to be on top of one of the issues. But the idea okay. is that we'll talk about other issues, too, because as you know, we went through this gubernatorial situation. Uh -huh. We had, we had uh, President well our, well, our former governor, Kitzhopper, and now we've got uh, Secretary of State. I don't Kate know what Brown. we got. we got a circus we got, in Salem. Uh, I don't understand. So anyway, but, I, but anyway, but we'll discuss that a little bit. We'll just kind of play we around with it. We'll have fun with him. With he knows John. a lot about it. Well, that's what we're going to do. We're going to okay. give John the lead. That's Terrific. It? Okay. okay, that sounds good. We're going to take a short break, folks, and we'll be right back. No, okay. 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 We're going to take a short break. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go, folks. We're back, folks. And boy, George, we're going to give you an opportunity now to maybe deal with a couple of maybe major issues here that are facing us now. They're sitting right in our midst here in Oregon. I'm not going to deal with national issues right now. We all know about the ices and the, I, I think it was ice cream. What was that? I don't know. What, ices was that? Oh, well, that's... I thought icing on the cake or something like that, was that? Well, fortunately, it's half a world away from us. Yes, so yes, yes. I don't know. I'm, I'm, <laughs> only, I'm interested in Oregon right now. And it's very you talk to him. He yeah, knows about this <laughs> issue. Well, hey, look, um, I think the, something that Oregon is... We're right there at the, at the front of the line right at this point in time. And that's the whole issue of gun issues, gun rights, the weapon, whole issue of weapons and whatever. And we've got an expert here, John, who happens to be a Democrat. And by Georgia, on the other hand, we have Democrats that are totally anti the whole issue of guns, but not John. I mean, John, John so he's going to educate us about this piece, and he's going to kind of give us a feel for where he thinks the legislature is going to go, because the Democrats hold both houses. They've had, uh, the, the, last time they have, they have had feelings, if you will, 
about gun rights and concealing and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, it's a Republican issue. But in this particular case, uh, uh, John has been on top of it, you know, so maybe we'll get a better feel for what's going on, and John will share that with us. And the other one, I'm just going to open it up to, to, for everybody, is the whole issue of the, the gubernatorial situation that we had. We have a new governor now, one who was not elected, if you will, but one who, who, who basically picked it up through our, our regular policy and whatever, uh, that um, the Secretary of State, would, whoever the Secretary of State would automatically be in line as far as being governor of the, the state of Oregon, and just so happened Kate Brown was, and whatever, and uh, what, what we feel about that. In fact, uh, it, it, it did happen during your tenure too, but at the end of your tenure, your, your time at art, with the idea that what, what, would, what would have been the reaction of, a, let's say, a, a major party organization like the ORB in regards to that issue, okay? So we'll talk a little bit about that. So we're just having an open kind of a situation, so the people understand, keeping it simple, right? Okay, John. Let's talk about uh, that one major issue that's going to be facing um, folks who are, quote, well, gun lovers, the whole nine yard. Let's talk about it. Well, <clears throat> I happen to be a Democratic uh, precinct committeeman in the Multnomah County Democratic Central Committee. Right. And it seems like everything is left, left, left. But uh, <clears throat> in the uh, state party, uh, there is a uh, gun owners caucus. Okay. And that's uh, relatively new, and the fact that uh, the uh, people are kind of coming around to what reality is, and there's not too many bill, gun bills uh, yet, or, or but there's a deadline coming up, and they uh, talking to Kevin Starrett of the uh, Oregon Firearms Federation, he, said, he expects a kind of a landslide coming, and some of these people they keep. Uh, Introducing bills and not only guns, but uh, other issues that to make people feel good. In fact, there's one um, I forget the number, and it says it'd be illegal to carry a firearm in a courthouse. Mm. It's already illegal to carry a firearm in a courthouse. <laughs> you know, it's been that way for a long time. It's being introduced now. <clears throat> oh yeah, and, and of course it, it was some some really uh, lefty Democrat, and um, but they had when. Uh, Oregon changed from it being a May issue on concealed handgun licenses in the uh, 89 legislature. And I lobbied the, the legislature as president of the Oregon State Shooting Association in 87, 89, and 91. So in 89, they changed it, which took effect in 1990. And all of a sudden, you showed up at, at police stations and, and a lot of places. Then there was a sign saying, uh, firearms and weapons prohibited. You know, mm -hmm. they made it a Class C felony or something like that. But before that, that wasn't a problem, mm -hmm. and so they had changed it to be in the uh, shall issue state. And uh, <clears throat> but the thing is, right now uh, it's kind of building up, and it's going to be about probably about the end of the month when I'll be able to see what the total number of bills will be, and the total number of bills inter introduced could be. Um, Four or five thousand in the House and two, three thousand in the Senate, and some of them are real important, and some are du duplicates. And they they used to put out a book, and it had them listed, and you would go down, and there you would see mm -hmm. two, three in the line, or the fact that you would see on this particular issue, then you'd go down three, four more, and then it'd be the same issue, and and uh, there'd be two, three more, and so it, on the exact same issue on whatever issue you're you're mm -hmm. interested mm -hmm. in, but say on on firearms. And the thing about the uh, the uh, anti-firearms, anti-freedom people, yeah. they are takers, and they and it, it's not about gun control. Is not about guns. It's about control. 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 All right. Look around Portland. They're building all these apartments, no parking. They're building these bioswales for the for the environment, and they're doing away with parking spaces. They're making it more and more inconvenient to have a car. And in fact, I have three nephews, they're in their 30s, do not have a driver's license. And there's a lot of young people not uh, getting driver's licenses. That makes a difference on what kind of job you can get. One, for the job itself, and two, is being able to get there. You know, suddenly you're offered jobs to start next week, and the things across town at a weird hour, you just can't go over the weekend and get yourself a driver's license right. and a car and all that right. kind of stuff. And public uh, transportation doesn't serve a lot of people. So the thing is, it's about control and making it more inconvenient in lots and lots of ways. 
because it's just not the firearms. And the thing is, the anti-gun people saying, well, <clears throat> crime's going up. Well, no, crime's going down. And that's really the fact is that crime is going down. In fact, uh, you got a paper right there that I, I photocopied out of a uh, magazine. Over mm -hmm. 11 million people in this country have concealed handgun licenses, or they call it other things, but anyway, there's, there's over a, uh, 11 million people. There's almost 200,000 people in Oregon that have concealed handgun licenses, and the average is about, about one out of four belongs to a woman. Mm -hmm. So, you know, some of these bad guys want to go pick on a gal sometime, the, the gal's liable to exercise mm. her uh, air conditioning mm. license. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, tell me, what, what, what about Senator Jenny, Jenny Burbick here in the Multnomah Portland area? What well, is she saying about this issue? Well, it'll be the same thing. She's still... Democrat. She's a Democrat. <laughs> yes, she is. But okay, the deal yeah. is, but she's, she's a real left she's Democrat, a and... And the thing is that uh, she still bring out the, the same thing. They can depend on her for doing uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the same thing, the same issues. And locally here in the city and the county, in Portland and Multnomah County, is that they want to uh, have more restrictions. And it's in violation of state law because Oregon has a preemption law. And the advantage of the preemption law is the fact that, because it, it used to be there was these checkerboards. If you, you would be okay in one county and not another county, one city and not another city. But now it says you can travel from, from, from uh, place to place because the rules are pretty even. The uh, difference is uh, on discharge and, and display. And um, federally, there's a Firearm Owners Protection Act which says that uh, if it's legal to have it here and it's legal in, in um, say, Vermont, you could travel all those through those jurisdictions, but you know, your uh, uh, normal plan of action is when you come to uh, Illinois, you would you'd tank up your car and then you would drive across Illinois mm -hmm, before mm -hmm. you'd stop in, mm -hmm. in, in another state. And that's the same, you would make your uh, plan to uh, go through New Jersey or through, um, uh, through New York to get into, you know, uh, Vermont or New Hampshire or Maine, you know, some of the nicer New England states. Mm -hmm. You know, I might make a point, too, that um, one of the things I have learned, you know, through through my engagement in the area and whatever, it's, it's hard to sell guns in Multnomah County in Portland. <laughs> I mean, it's just a hard sell. Is it really? It's oh, a hard yeah. sell. And Jenny Burke is there. Politically it's, hard. Yeah, polit it's politically hard to sell. Outside of the area, mm -hmm. there's no problem. So the idea is that, that's what I was going to ask John. So John, how do you get the? Uh, what, what do you say to? What do you say to, to Multnomah County in Portland about about guns? Well, the majority of who basically are voting it down. What's well, up? they have the instant check when you go to buy a firearm from a dealer, or if you go to the gun show in uh, Oregon and uh, now in uh, Washington State. That when you buy from there, whether the person is a dealer at the gun show or the person is a uh, a hobbyist, mm -hmm. there's somebody there that you have to run through that the background check, and it's and it's instant, and it goes through in most cases. Um, people with pretty common names might have a little bit of a wait, mm -hmm. and uh, of course, uh, a couple of times the BATFE decided that they were going to shut down the the instant check for um, for maintenance on a weekend. And uh, needless to say, a lot of people called their uh, U.S. senators and said, you know, we're, go we're going to dissolve your budget. <laughs> they, got, they decided, you know, <laughs> to change that. See? So they're, uh, but they're d doing what the, uh, uh, you know, the president and the attorney general want. And the thing is that they don't think we should have the right to, to do it. And, mm -hmm. and, and some of these people says, well, why do you need one? Well, um, Let's hope you never need a firearm, you know, because uh, they're nice to have, and I, and I like shooting, and a lot of people like shooting. And the thing is that uh, hopefully uh, never have to use it as a civilian. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if you ever have to, um, in any case, think that you're going to have to uh, go against somebody and kill them to keep yourself alive, mm -hmm. I mean, you'll never be the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even, even if nothing comes of it, it just, uh, you just... Your mindset is the fact that you have made your your uh, decision that you are going to survive this ordeal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And as a law-abiding citizen, you haven't uh, 
a duty to preserve yourself for yourself mm -hmm. and for your family mm -hmm. and for, for your friends and associates. And in this case, you have the show and you have the restaurant and several things. And you have your activities through the Republican Party and, and all that. And then you have uh, the duty for your, your neighborhood and a city and county and mm -hmm. state and for this nation and, and humanity. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the criminal element's only 2% of the population and half of them are into white collar crimes. Look at Bernie Madoff was the pillar of the society until uh, things went to hell in the handbasket, you know. <laughs> but the deal is, and then when you, and so that's about half of them. And then the other half, they're into physical crimes, which is where they're going to steal something from you, uh, no matter how big it is, uh, physically take it from you. Then you have that smaller proportion, running about a quarter, a third percent, that's into person crimes, where they're going to, uh, and, and I consider picking your pocket a person crime, or whether they're going to kill you or somewhere in, in between. Mm -hmm. And the uh, thing to understand is that uh, lobbying and um, the legislature in 87, 89, and, and 91, a lot of us is to get the crime down. And crime has gone down. And what the, uh, the criminal justice industrial complex and the prison industrial complex has done is that they've had it, some of the laws that have been upgraded and they created, created new laws. The fact when they say somebody's a felon, it's actually pretty damn easy to be a felon nowadays because it used to be if you tried to outrun the police, it was a big fine. Now it's a felony. Okay. Resisting arrest was used to be a misdemeanor. Now it's a felony. Okay. And but but at the same point, I'm still making the point, and I'm going to bring Artie in on this deal <clears> because he was yeah. out there knocking on doors when he was running against run, running for the for Congress. And what what was the feeling were you getting out in, in your area, uh, Art? And as well, you know, we didn't talk about guns. Too much. Didn't talk no. about guns. Okay. Uh, the, uh, I uh, I can point to three or four instances, but mm -hmm. usually you were talking about things that were. Um, different. I didn't talk about mm -hmm. guns too much. Mm -hmm. I'm very strong on the Second Amendment mm -hmm. and love to shoot just like he does. Mm -hmm. And so it's an important part of my mm -hmm. personal political mm -hmm. philosophy and the Republican Party uh, is pretty good on the Second Amendment. But uh, door to door, we didn't talk about that. didn't much. talk about that. Well, sometimes. But See, because it it's interesting here thing. because we are, we're, we're a major <laughs> metropolitan area aspect of it, and most of your large gun shows are right here in the Portland metropolitan sure. area. Yeah, I've been to and some of them. There's some major politics going on on that end of it aspect yeah, of it. And, sure. and Jenny, is, in all due respect, um, Senator Burbick, you know, she's, she's, she's very outspoken, but she's been in the Senate for quite a number of years, and that's been one of her mainstays. And uh, and so, so the misconnect is how do you how do you educate her yeah. as to the rationale for needing a gun? See, I also I ran the CD4, and everybody's armed for the, to the teeth down there, <laughs> so <laughs> we don't, don't talk about it much. I was in Coos County. I was in Coos County when I first ran, and uh, I was given a speech in the primary. And somebody said, "How are you on the Second Amendment?" I said, "Well, I've got a permit. My kids do. We're strong." Because I said, I, "I'm not armed today. I don't know what's good for a political rally." Wrong thing to say, because my <laughs> opponent was armed. <laughs> and then the sheriff said, "Dr. Robinson needs to know he can carry his gun anywhere he wants in my county." He came to about six of my events, and he always made sure I was carrying. You saw the sheriff. You were running back to your car if you didn't have. <laughs> so that's Coos County. That's, that's, County. that's yeah, District right, Four. Right, right, so right, right, right. maybe the reason we didn't talk about it, yeah, we're right, on the same right, page. Right, 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 right. <laughs> but but it's kind of interesting here in Portland. I, I think yeah. we talk about our area as far as concealed weapons are concerned. How many how many concealed weapon folks are running around in the in the metropolitan area here? In Portland? Uh, Some idea. Yeah, I have an idea. It's about about ten thousand. About ten thousand. Yeah, know, when yeah. when. When uh, Oregon, when Oregon was a, a May issue state, Multnomah County only had 15. Mm -hmm. uh, Dick Bogle had one, and he says, "Well, he didn't have any special in. If you believe mm -hmm. that, why I, I got a bridge in Brooklyn to sell you." Mm -hmm. But uh, well, he was a former policeman too. Yeah, but you know, it's, I've never it's, known a policeman yeah. not to carry a weapon even after they've gotten out. Well, they, <laughs> yeah, but anyway, the deal is he he had a concealed handgun license right. through Mil, uh, Mil, Multnomah County. When it was a May issue, right. but the thing is, you, back then you didn't have to live in the county to get one. They used to joke about Harney County had as many concealed handgun licenses as they had people, because if people <laughs> had 
reason to go over there. In fact, a lot of people had had Amway and Tupperware licenses, and they'd they go over there and they they told the uh, sheriff in Columbia County, "Well, I do business in your county. Oh, you want to permit?" <laughs> <laughs> and now, so the deal is, when they went to the the uh, shall issue, you have to get it in your county. So that's why uh, Multnomah County has about ten thousand or so. I see. I see. Do you do you foresee uh, Senator Burbick? Uh, Putting additional bills, uh, repealing some of the some of the uh, the laws on gun. I wouldn't doubt laws. that a, okay. a bit. You know, okay. and it's just that uh, uh, it has turned out that a uh, like I said, the criminal element is only two percent of the population. Then you got about ten percent that you know they they flip you off and call your names and stuff like that. But the deal is they have found the people who have concealed handgun licenses. <laughs> are more law-abiding than the general population. Yeah. Okay, all right. Well, we spent quite a bit of time on that. We'll probably spend more time. In fact, we might invite the, the senator to come on the, sh on the show and maybe share some thoughts between the two of you, you know? I mean, your family, your Democrats, right? No yeah. problem. In fact, on that, the, uh, <laughs> the county uh, chairwoman, uh, Deborah Kaferi, was at the Multnomah County Democratic Central Committee, and she gave her spiel about for gun control. And, was it? Okay. And, uh, and she was probably expecting one of those guys to get on her case, and there was a good-looking gal got up there, and I mean, it, figuratively speaking, there was blood all over the place. Is that right? Just, oh, ripped her a new one, you know. Oh, wow, really? Uh, was she a Democrat? Oh, yeah, and, and she's a nice-looking chick from New Jersey. So. And she's a yeah, she, she's a concealed weapon? She's got a... Oh, yeah, she uh, she tore into her real good, and the fact she was looking at here was this uh, <clears throat> woman who was off it. Obviously, a professional. This lady's in the real estate, okay. so the deal is that it wasn't talking, about, you know, run-of-the-mill person. You're talking about somebody that really had some yeah. uh, class. Right. I got you. Oh wow. Well, one thing that everybody's waiting, if you will, is for me to have a show talking about the whole issue of the governor, the governorship of the state of Oregon. You know, and a lot of folks were basically coming at me and saying, "Bruce, I don't know who she is and and uh, how she was promoted when she first got out of the out of the gate, you know, from the standpoint of being bisexual. They didn't like that idea. I mean, everyone knew, it's, the, a number of people knew her as Kate Brown. She lived here in the Multnomah County area. I, mean, I know and whatever. I didn't know anything about her, her sexual preference and whatever, as far as I'm concerned, that's behind you, on the doors. I'm not, I'm not interested in, in that situation. But it is a problem, and, and a lot of folks don't want to speak up. So they say, Bruce, you got to bring the issue to the table so people in Multnomah County <laughs> and Portland understand what's going on here. Some people are talking about recall. Some people are saying, well, hey, I like her, but the fact of the matter is I didn't vote for her. I'd just like to, if she wants to run again, put it on the, put it on the ballot like with the rest of them. And then if she, ends at, if she wins at the end of the term, no problem. But the fact of the matter is that some of them are saying, well, gee, I, I voted for John Kitsapper. I voted right down the line. And in fact, one of them said, they came in and said, Bruce, I even put your name in there. <laughs> but, but the fact of the matter is an issue. And uh, so we need to discuss it. People need to know it. So we're going to try to inform them. So let's talk a little bit about that. What were your feelings about that when that came out that way? Well, actually, uh, Kate Brown comes sliding through on a click. Mm -hmm. um, there was... Um, uh, Shirley Gold suddenly didn't run for re-election and Kate Brown moved. Shirley she, Gold? She was a state senator. Okay. So I just figured she'd be running. Nobody would run against her. Or, and so she didn't run, but uh, Kate Brown had moved up. And um, and Diane Rosenbaum come in as a, a state rep in, in the area. And then one uh, Kate Brown Brown moved up, why then uh, Diane Rosenbaum moved up, and then somebody else is in there, which has been changed a little time. So there's kind of that little click that kind of slipped her in. Mm -hmm. And so then the deal is, uh, as far as uh, uh, John Kitzharber uh, messing up, you know, it seems like all the golden uh, politicians, you know, when they uh, fall on their sword, it's really messy. I mean, look at Neil Goldschmidt, you know, that yeah. deal. and. And then you, you have uh, 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 Jump Kits Harbor, you know, on that, that thing, and it's just uh, really too bad. And, you know, the thing is that uh, Chris Dudley uh, could have uh, beaten him, but, you know, he made some remark about uh, weight staff making the highest uh, uh, minimum wage plus, plus all those tips, like, and that killed him. Well, he didn't spend enough time in Multnomah County, too. Yeah. And, well, 
Being a basketball important. player, well, he, I know had, that. Had he, had, he had He had the blazer, but, not, but I'm yeah. talking about the people, if you will. Yeah. He really didn't spend the time with those folks. And when we invited him over several mm -hmm. times, and again, the consultant said no. So, you know. Yeah, this is, and this is what killed uh, Richardson. You know, you, 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 uh, you start listening to these uh, consultants, you know, and, and they like to have the battle, and, 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 and so that they can go to another candidate and say, look at all these issues I brought up. But the deal is when you're the candidate, there's some things that you have to say no on. You know, it's, it's uh, kind of like we discussed a little earlier, you know, the, uh, the staunch Republicans are surprised on some Republicans in the U.S. Uh, Congress that they, they don't vote for strict abortion, but, well, the guys who got daughters, you know, mm -hmm. so they don't want that for their daughters. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I might add, too, on that same issue we re referenced, you mentioned, you mentioned uh, uh, the, the kids hopper aspect. Another area that people were talking about was the fact they, they remembered Bob Packwood mm -hmm. back in the days and how media, if you will, sort of held back. And, uh, and as opposed to really pointing, it was on the basis of the same concept. I think it was kind of like talking about it, but yeah. they're really not getting in and asking, if you will, that the person just go on to resign. And it's same, the same thing happened with Dennis in this particular case. And now look at it now, it's gotten worse. Mm. You know what I mean? So, I, well, how, how did you, how, how, one, how would you have handled it? How, you know, how did you handle it during the attorney? I know you had a lot of work to do. Well, let me you comment know. on something Talk he just said, because he's right about the consultants. Yeah. The consultants uh, cost us victories in this past election. I won't go into it, but that's a class of people. Some of them are good and some of them aren't. And, right. and if a candidate listens to the wrong one, he can lose. Mm -hmm. And they were definitely harmful to us this time. Uh, on the general issue of the sort of circus over in Salem, I don't understand it very well. You know, I read the newspapers like you do. But uh, there were a lot of uh, people in our party that wanted to just be glad as heck that the governor was in this trouble, yeah. and to just beat it to death, that's where we're going to win. Mm -hmm. Well, the people knew about the trouble, uh, but I have a little different view than, than that. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we need to be out there telling them why they should elect our candidate. Right. And if the other side has a misfortune, uh, I'm, I'm glad to win. But I don't think we should make, an, uh, the public already knew things were wrong if they mm -hmm. were wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was all rumor, you know, all this kind of stuff. But I think uh, our party would have been a lot better off to keep pushing the benefits of mm -hmm. our candidate mm -hmm. and uh, the misfortune in the Democrats that, you know, these politicians on both sides, they'll get into trouble. That things happen to people, mm -hmm. sometimes inadvertently, sometimes they do, you know, mm -hmm. things they really shouldn't. Um, they affect the political process, but the public wants to know does this person care about me? Does he want to help me? Can he? And is he going to be better for my life if I vote for him? That means you have to show them why they should elect you. And if the other guy has disadvantages, that's fine. I'm, you know, you lucked out. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that's what the campaign should be about. Okay, good. We got about 20 seconds here now, folks. And um, one has been a great time. We have to spend more time with that. I want to make sure I take the time and say thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Art, for for serving as chair of the Republican Party and also running for office. You did a good job. You left the party in in, in good hands, if you will, hopefully. You know, well, well, I'm talking about your ideas and your thoughts, you know what I'm saying? We did our best. So, that's right, that's right. So thank you very much for doing that. Okay, buddy? Yeah, Appreciate yeah, that. Thank you. John, always a pleasure. Okay, good. Folks. A pleasure to meet you, sir. Take care, folks, and be, and have a have a good one, and I'll see you next time around with another good show. Art, take care. Good Thanks. job. Good okay. job. Good. Have a good one, folks. Yeah, this